Today, interesting video. I'm gonna do a shootout. I'm gonna do a comparison. My Bell modular helmet that I used on my trip. Compare that with the LS2 Advent X that John was using during his trip, during his uh, ride, our cross country. So just a, a, small, a small background of uh, what we're talking about. Experience of about three weeks on the bikes, on two Harleys riding. Coast to coast and back, around 8,000 miles in total. All weather conditions, high temperatures, very, very high temperatures above 105 degrees and very low temperatures around 40 degrees at the high peaks where we were at. It was day, daytime, nighttime, fog, rain, sun, you name it. I took it to, through all weather conditions, all possible riding options. So this is a very thorough review, very thorough comparison between the two helmets. During the ride itself, most of the time, I was wearing the bell. That was my helmet, the white bell that I got just before the trip. And John was using the LS2 Advantex. And uh, we did actually switch a few times, uh, but the majority of the time I was with the bell. So <clears throat> I have a very good understanding and a very good feeling of the bell and also of the Advantex. Just when we were planning this uh, trip, the, the three week trip, uh, we were trying to figure out what helmets do we take. The optimal thing would be to take two helmets and that's what we had in mind, to take a full face for the stretches uh, when we were riding you know, in cold weather and highway speeds, I preferred, I personally prefer to be with a closed helmet in terms of safety. But I also wanted during the hot temperatures and slow speeds when we were going in the parks and we didn't need, you know, to be going too fast. And at a high temperature, I wanted a, a half helmet. So till the last moment, we weren't sure if we we're gonna take two helmets. And then a week or two before, I decided and uh, together with John that we we're gonna go for a modular, a modular option. So we started to research uh, the internet to figure out what is the best option for us. I never rode a modular helmet. I never used a modular helmet. I would say the most used helmet that we've seen on the, on the internet was actually the Bell Modular. A lot of people like it very much. And there was also a good demand and good word out there about the, uh, the LS2 Advent X. Deciding uh, we're gonna actually go ahead and buy the LS2. Researched, uh, try to figure out, and was just the beginning of riding season. We just couldn't get any Advent X, uh, LS2 Advent X. So John was able to grab pretty much the last one at one of the stores, and I did not get an option, so I went with the Bell. And we decided we would actually be doing a, a comparison and switch, you know, switch back and forth between the two of us to see, you know, to get a feel for both, and actually to do a review eventually once we get back. We wound up getting the Bell, the white Bell. John with the, went with the LS2, and I did get a, a chance to ride a few hours uh, with uh, the Advantex. I wanted to see what it was like. The Bell helmet was just great. It was, it's very comfortable, nicely vented. Noise protection on it, it is good. It was a comfortable helmet, and I absolutely definitely can see why people uh, want to use the Bell Modular. The modular mechanism to bring up, you know, the chin guard works easy. It's very accurate. There's no need for force. Whenever you want it, you click it open, and it opens up. Very nicely built. I can definitely see why people uh, opted using this. Also, the transparent visor is nicely you know, operated, clicks in, no problem whatsoever. Vents, open and closed, nicely ventilated. Over here and on the chin and on the chin as well. Very uh, nicely built, that is the bell. Like I said, definitely see how people enjoy using this and I enjoyed it as well. As for the looks of the bell, I think it's a good looking helmet. Uh, the, the silhouette, you know, the profile, everything. It's a nice looking helmet. Weight, I'm not sure the specs, I think it's so absolutely a good choice, a good helmet, the Bell. And I'm saying that now for the first time, if you're gonna be using it mainly as a, as a full face, with every once in a while when you wanna use, when you wanna open up and get a, little bit, get a little bit more air, open it up, get some air at slow speeds, drink, and enjoy the modular uh, portion of it. But we'll get to the exact differences between the two of them. 
right after I talk about the Advantix. Now I want to talk a little bit about the concept of a modular helmet. A modular helmet uh, initially uh, originally was defined as a helmet that is a full face, a closed helmet, where it actually has also a modular part in it, a, a movable chin mount, so you can open it up and use it as a, I would say a three quarter helmet and get some air in and drink and, you know, talk. So that's why they call it the modular helmet. Both helmets qualify as modular helmets. What I think is the LS2 Advent X takes it even a step further. This is much more than a modular helmet. This I would actually call a true two-in-one helmet. Now let me explain and uh, so you can get an understanding of why I consider this a two-in-one as opposed to this, the bell only being a modular. So the bell, absolutely a modular helmet, but there are a few limitations that the LS2 Advan X is actually uh, with its design and functionality overcomes some of the limitations that the bell, and I should say actually every other modular helmet that has the same traditional design, where it's uh, a guard, a, a chin guard of the helmet that rises up and stays up like up to here and doesn't go fully uh, retract all the way to the back. All the traditional modular helmets, I would say suffer from the same problems as what I'm gonna be telling right now. First of all, at high speeds, because the bell, the chin part only opens up to here. Okay, let me put it on and show you. Okay, because the chin part only rises up to here, this creates quite a few problems of aerodynamics. First one, aerodynamics. When you're going any speed over, I would say, 45, 50, with a limited wind protection or no wind protection, or even with the wind protection I had on my Lowrider ST, this portion would get the gusts of the wind, and that would literally pull the helmet and my head back, creating force on my neck. So it's the aerodynamics of this portion. You know, people like to say it's like a sail or whatever, but it's true. Any uh, wind you were getting, whether it's on the uh, from coming off the windshield, the windscreen, or if you have no fairing whatsoever, any wind at high speeds, and I mean anything over 45, 40, 45, I would be getting this motion of wind hitting in this part and throwing my, uh, my helmet back. That was one thing. Second thing, think about it. When you look to the side, checking if uh, cars are coming when you wanna make a turn or move or whatever, this portion also gets hit by the wind, increasing the movement and the force on your neck to the side. This portion is definitely an aerodynamic problem. Additionally, with this, with this portion moving, I don't know what it is, it did change the, the center of gravity of the helmet, although it's pretty much on the, same, on the same axis over here, but for whatever reason, this, when it went up, it moved, it moved the weight forward, causing my head a little bit to tilt down. And even when you do this movement, now you have a longer, a longer arm of weight stretch out forward. So when you do that mo that movement, you actually feel you feel the head the the weight, or you feel a change in the way the helmet is sitting on your head, and the forces on your neck are different than what it was with the LS2. The LS2, and I'll talk about it in a second. So the LS2 in this case, the operation is just as smooth and just as easy and just as accurate as the bell was. Okay, one button, flipped it all, flipped it up, and over here in this case, it would go all the way back. Now what this design actually did, it enabled, uh, there was no, there's actually no piece or no part of the helmet that is being, that is disrupting the wind flow on the helmet. And that actually, uh, you know, it's good, it's aerodynamic and you don't feel that motion that I was getting with the bell uh, modular. So aerodynamics, it was, it, it was just great. It was just good. There was no problem at high, at high uh, very high speeds. As opposed to with the Bell, I, could def I did not go high speeds. Nothing over 50 I would uh, be riding with the Bell. I had to close it and go full face. With this, we were riding very high speeds and there was absolutely no aerodynamic problem. So this was, this was a, a, a full three quarter helmet no problem whatsoever. And center of gravity, if you notice, uh, the weight, the weight simply shift from the front to the back on the same axis. So even uh, 
Moving my head from side to side was no problem. Up and down, there was absolutely no problem. When you try it out, you'll see what I mean, but there's absolutely no change uh, in the center of gravity when it's open or it's closed, and it's, uh, you, you just don't notice any difference. So aerodynamics and weight feeling. Both helmets do the same function, but like I said, this helmet, the LS2, lets you ride at high speeds as if you're riding a, with a three-quarter helmet. And with the Bell, you just couldn't go at high speeds because, like I said before, the wind. The wind effect pulling your head and your neck backwards. Another important function where the LS2 Advantix is superior to the Bell is, for example, night operation. Now let me show you. And what you have with the Bell, full face, no problem. I closed, transparent visor. Now let's say it's sunny out. What do I do? I drop the visor, the tinted visor. If I want, I close also the transparent visor. All is the same with the Advantex. Let me show you. Same thing with the LS2. Full face, visor, transparent visor, drop it down, no problem. If there's sun in your eyes, drop your visor. You want to be completely protected, drop that as well. Where the big difference starts is actually in night riding. Let me show you. If you're night riding, and we happen to, it happened to us quite a few times at night or early in the morning when it was getting really dark, with the bell at night, when it's hot, want to ride with an open face, three-quarter face. I can only use the tinted visor, but it's dark. What can I do? Maybe I'll use the transparent visor. You can't. That's one big problem that any one of these helmets has. If you want to ride at night with an open face, you have to have a set of transparent goggles or glasses. There's no other way to protect your, your eyes and, you know, uh, wind in your eyes. The only option when it's open is with the tinted visor. Whereas with the LS2, let's say we're riding at night now, but it's really hot and I want to be uh, with an open face. I raise it up and I drop the clear visor. It's still warm and the sun is out. No problem. I drop the tinted visor. My point is the LS2 gives you way more functionality for different scenarios of riding. Whereas the Bell has a few cases and one of them I think is a very critical case, it's at high speeds. It doesn't function as a three-quarter helmet that you, can be use, that you can use at high speeds. As you can see, easy functionality on the LS2. So as you've seen and I've demonstrated to you, both operate really easy, very comfortable, but I think of you, you've seen by now that the functionality of the LS2 Advantix is much better than the Bell, it gives you a full option for any possible scenario, whereas the Bell limits you to three quarter with an open face. At nighttime, you definitely have to have a, a pair of goggles or glasses or clear glasses, and most important, high speeds. High speeds, you cannot ride with the Bell with the, the chin portion open, whereas with the LS2, you absolutely can. As for aesthetics, which helmet is nicer, or looks better, that is subjective, I'm not gonna comment. That is really personal. Both helmets, I think, look really good. After riding uh, for the majority of my ride uh, with the Bell, I swapped with John the LS2. And for me, that was, uh, I immediately understood that I should have gotten the LS2. Therefore, after, the, after this uh, trip, I went ahead and ordered myself an LS2 Advantex. As a matter of fact, it's right now where John, he's charging it because tomorrow we're doing another video together on his channel. Uh, we're gonna, we got actually the intercom system so we can talk to each other. So we're gonna pair it up and do a video about it tomorrow. LS2, the Advantex, is my choice and I'm actually selling the Bell. It served me right, but if I want full functionality and uh, the best option is absolutely to go with the LS2 Advantex. I think that the LS2 Advantex is pretty much, it's just a better all around helmet that would truly give you more options of riding functions in all scenarios. That's why I think it's a much better choice and definitely that's why, that's why I got it. Also, the LS2 Advantix has great wind protection and it's got very good ventilation. I opened up the top, there was so much, so much air coming in, it actually made it a little bit noisier because of that. 
obviously when it's uh, open, I'll, so much air comes in, you can actually feel, I felt my hair, whatever's left of it being sucked up, very ventilated. As a conclusion, I want to say that I think the LS2 Advantix is actually is superior, is superior to the Bell and to probably all the rest of uh, the helmets that have the same concept. Again, it's not about, it's not about the looks, the design, whatever. This has, has 100% of all scenarios you're going to be riding with. This gives a full answer. That's why I think this is a much better choice, and uh, that's why I decided to get it, actually. This, the Bell, is a traditional modular helmet. The LS2 Advantex is a modular, and it's actually a two-in-one, a true two-in-one, because you get all the functionality that any traditional modular gets, plus, plus, plus. This is truly a, a full face and a truly a three-quarter face with no drawbacks, absolutely no drawbacks that I found. And that's about it, I think. I hope I uh, covered all the parts and all the, uh, the uh, points I wanted to cover. I talked about the comfort, I talked about the noise protection, I talked about the wind, the ventilation, I talked about the functionality. I didn't, I didn't touch the price, I think they're pretty much priced the same, but I think as, as a whole, as a, as a helmet that would give you more flexibility, more functionality, the LS2 Advantage X. As a matter of fact, I think that the traditional companies that create the modular helmet that opens just like the Bell, Simpson, I think the showy Neotech as well, if they don't step up their game and come up with this concept, they're gonna be losing because this is becoming a very popular helmet. I can tell you when I was trying to buy it, I, it, was, it was back ordered. I simply couldn't put my, I couldn't get one. That's why I went with the Bell. So if the traditional companies don't come up, don't come up with the same concept, and I think LS2 are not the, the first ones to come up with it. There was another company, I mean the chin portion to go all the way back, but that is a game changer. That thing is a game changer, and the fact that you can use both visors, tinted and transparent, when it's open and when it's closed, that is the big game changer. That's it, guys. Hope you enjoy this one. Oh, yeah. Right. Forgot to tell you. You can pick up the LS2 Advantex at Motorcycle Depot. There's links down below by the description where you can directly take you to the helmets. It comes in different colors. It comes in carbon fiber. Matter of fact, it even comes installed with the Cardo, Cardo communication system, which is what I picked up with John, so we can now talk. So we're gonna have another video uh, showing the communication system between the two of us. We both picked up, I think he got uh, the carbon, I got the black, you'll see it tomorrow, with the Cardo. I'm Sandy, you're watching Holy Shift, hope you learned something. By the way, if you don't know and you're new to this channel, we just came back from an 8,000 mile trip, coast to coast, to coast, New Jersey, California, back to New Jersey, three weeks, 8,000 miles. It's all documented on videos, great videos out there. Take a look on my channel. I'm Sandy watching Holy Shift. Hope you enjoyed this one. Till the next video, guys. Peace out.